Hi everybody, it's Sherry with Cards and More by Sherry and the Supply Garden. Here we are today with installment day three of our 12 days of Christmas and we're going to be making this cute little gift box and it's just one piece of 6x12 cardstock or pretty paper whatever you choose to use and it'll hold a it would hold bracelets earrings and necklaces candy uh, if you make that snowman soup stuff um, that would fit nicely in here it's not too big it's not too small overall the box itself um, measures four by four and a half by one inch so that's a nice size little gift box so to get started we have a piece of six by twelve paper now this is fairly thin and if I were going to put anything very hefty in that small box I'd want to use an actual cardstock weight something a little bit heavier but we're just going to use this today so you're going to need your scoreboard or however you go about scoring and on the short end the six inch end we're going to score it one inch on both sides so you're going to score it one and score it five and you're going to score all the way down and I want to be careful on this particular paper not to push too hard because I could score just right smack through it okay then you're going to turn and on the long side you're going to score it one and five and a half and then flip and do the same thing so one inch five and a half turn it around and do the same thing again at one inch and five and a half and that's the end of our scoring you can put your scoreboard away and then we do want to go ahead and um, score and burnish all those edges if you can see them <laughs> sometimes have you ever noticed that it really depends on your paper and the pattern and the light and which way you hold the paper whether you can really see those score lines or not as my grandmother used to say you got to hold your mouth just right when you're doing something like that okay so we're scoring all those And of course, if you don't have a bone folder, you can use your good old thumbnail, like I would do. Uh, or anything that's going to help you have a nice, crisp edge. That one did not go straight, I don't think. Nope. Because I didn't score it good enough. We'll fix that. It's all a learning curve, you guys. Yeah, that's better. And yes, I have two sizes of scoreboards. I didn't think it was necessary, but it sure is nice to have that little one every now and then. Okay, I think that's straight now. There we go. Okay. Now, what you're going to do on each of the long sides, you're going to cut up to your where your score lines intersect on both long sides. So I'll use my nice little tiny scissors here and cut up. Hopefully you can see this. I know the camera has sometimes has trouble focusing on stuff that's all white. And you also want to, these are your little flaps that are going to go in and we're going to adhere. And it's a good idea if you trim just a little sliver off of these. Hopefully you can do it more even than I do. Um, and this will help you not have quite so much bulk where they meet and they will fold in a little bit nicer. You're not going to see these so if you're crooked like I am it doesn't really matter because it's going to be on the inside of the box. But it really does help you have nicer corners where those would meet. Especially if you're using a heavier weight um, paper than what I'm presently using. This one's not too awful heavy and I could probably get away without doing it but it's always better safe than sorry. Ok, 
Okay, and then that last little one. Okay, whoops, that guy's still attached. He's like, no, I don't want to leave. Um, I would also recommend, I'm just going to use some mono adhesive because it's quick and easy while we're taping. I would recommend you use something a little bit um, tougher to apply to your boxes. But we're just going to use this right now because it's quick and easy. On all six of these tabs, you're going to apply adhesive. And if you fold them in like this, you know you're putting them on the right side, if that makes sense. Just fold all those little tabs in. I would normally use, if I was really going to gift this out with something in it, I would probably use... Um, score tape or even my ATG if something not too heavy was going to be. Alright, now we're going to attach all of these and you're just simply going to fold these in and meet that folded edge with this cut edge and stick them down. Same thing over here. Meet your folded edge with your cut edge. And you can tell I didn't get that one side um, cut really even because things don't come out right. But that's alright. Now, here in the middle, it doesn't matter which side you stick it to. Uh, just pick one and be consistent. Okay, and there's our box and it folds right down onto itself with its own lid. Isn't that handy? Love it. Now normally I would make like a like a cardstock belly band or something like that to hold it together, but I don't have a whole lot of solid color 12 by 12 cardstock, so I'm going to make my belly band out of ribbon. And this is a nice ribbon that's about half inch wide. You could even use something something uh, wider if you wanted to. And we're just going to come up around here, cut a little extra for overlap. And then I'm going to put some, um, a nice glue dot on here, maybe, there we go, to hold that together. And again, with all belly bands, you want it to be snug, but not so tight that you can't get it off. I think I'll trim a little of that excess. Okay, and there you have your belly band, and we are going to dress that up. Alright, now, um, for the top of the box, I'm going to show you a little watercolor technique here. I have an image that I stamped with stays on onto watercolor paper, and the reason that I use stays on is because it's a solvent ink. It is not water soluble, which means when I watercolor on it, that image is going to stay put. Okay? So, I have um, some aqua painters, water brushes, whatever you call them. Uh, this set that I have in particular comes with two different size tips. I'm going to use the smaller one. And if you don't actually have watercolors, did you know that you could watercolor with your dye-based ink pads? Yes. Yes, you can. Most all ink pads cases you can push in on the lid. Okay? We're going to do that with all of these. Regardless of the style, there's a little bit of give there, and you can push in, and what you're doing, and don't worry about that sound, that doesn't mean you're breaking your case, is that you're picking up your ink onto your lid. Okay? Then you can take your water pen and pick this up, and you have a watercolor palette and you just go right onto this watercolor paper like you know what you're doing. Watercoloring is one of my favorite techniques. There's lots of ways to do it. You can do it with watercolor pencils. You can do it like this. Um, if you don't want to get your pads icky looking like this, your cases, um, if you have uh, the markers, you can take a piece of acetate or um, if you have the Stampin' Up! boxes that the wood stamps come in, you can take your marker and just color 
on the piece of acetate and use that as your palette and pick up your color right there and you could do it with a regular paintbrush and water too. You don't have to have one of these. Uh, I just happen to like them and they're heavy duty. And the way you're going to get your shading here is as this dries you can come back in and overlay a little bit more color. See how we're doing that? And on, st on line art stamps like this they're going to give you an idea where your shading should be, where those um, where those lines are at. Super simple, right? Okay, then you just clean your brush off on something. I've just got a dried up old baby wipe over here. Okay, and we're going to take our light green here and color our ribbon. And I'm doing this super fast. I would go back in and add more detail and maybe be a little bit careful, but you don't want to sit here and watch me watercolor for five or ten minutes. So we're just going to do this down and dirty quick and easy. Again, wipe off before you go to your next color. I'm going to pick up this darker green for our holly leaves. And if you if you think you're getting it, it, too loosey goosey with the painting here, and you think you've got too much water, just blot it off a little bit, dry it off, and then go back and pick up uh, your ink so that you have a little bit better control of where that's going because it will it will flow once you get it going here darken that up down the center of those leaves a little bit okay again wipe off I need a little bit more water in mine but that's alright then for my holly berries, I'll pick up some cherry cobbler here. Color those in. I see that one's a little bit wet. I'm going to blot him just a smidgen so that he doesn't go where he's not supposed to. All right. Now, you may be wondering about that band down the middle of those bells. My gray ink pad is uh, a waterproof ink pad, so you, I can't do this with it. However, I have a watercolor pencil. So I'm just going to quickly smooch a little color in here. And then come back with my pencil and blend that gray out. So that sort of looks like a silver or pewter band across there. Okay, then for a little bit of detail, for the clapper inside the bell, here, see the little clapper? I'm going to take my bullet point end of my marker, my brown marker, and color that. And then I'm also going to come back with um, red and give these some definition here on this band. Okay? Quick and easy, right? Okay, now, oh goodness, I have so much stuff on my table. I'm going to take this little guy, a lot of you know this tool, I don't know what it's called, um, I guess an edge distressor, this one happens to be um, the Tim Holtz version and I'm just going to rough the edges up of this just to give it a little bit more character. You see how that roughs the edges up? And you can do it as much or as little as you want especially on this tough old watercolor paper. Okay, and that gives that a nice, rough, kind of vintage looking edge. Now I've got a piece of darker green cardstock that I'm going to mat this onto. So I'm going to rough these edges up too. Now, when you use a, a lighter weight cardstock, you want to be a little lighter in your touch. Otherwise, and I speak from experience, you can bend and fold this stuff really easy. easy. Okay, 
So we rough up some of those edges there. Wipe off all the paper goobers. I don't think this side is enough. There we go. That looks better. Um, and then because the watercolor paper is heavy and has a bit of texture to it, I'm going to um, use score tape as my adhesive just so I can be sure that it stays where I put it. Okay. Love score tape. I usually cut it, but it's in the interest of time here. Uh, and because it does tear so wonderfully. It, and that's why I like using it so much better than red liner tape. <sighs> Alright, then we'll just eyeball center that on there. And that's our little decoration that's going to go on our box. And then I'm going to go back to my glue dots. These are, these happen to be the Zots brand medium sized ones. Let me tell you, these suckers are super sticky. Put a couple of those on there. Yeah. Put our bell decoration on there. And there we have our little gift box. You slide that belly band off and open her up. Okay guys, I appreciate you joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this cute little fast project. Be sure to stay tuned for the next project in our 12 days of Christmas. Like and subscribe to my channel and have a great day. Bye!